Welcome to second semester of AP Calculus. In this semester, we're going to take a lot of look at the uh, integral, and the integral starts out with the, what we call antiderivatives, which is the you just get the derivative going the other way around, um, and then we're going to take a look at a closely related topic, which is called an indefinite integral, which does not have limits on it, and we'll end this lesson with some differential equations where we're finding some constant values. Really, the most important thing for you to understand here in this section is that the antiderivative is going to be the derivative the other way around. Uh, think of it as kind of the inverse operation here, or the opposite operation. Um, so the first uh, definition we need for you is that the antiderivative of a function is in, in, on, on an interval i is such that f prime of f of x for every x in i, uh, this is f prime, so the capital F of x would be the antiderivative. And for today, the most important thing for you to learn is how to find those antiderivatives. I'll give you a couple of common antiderivatives, a couple of rules that you can follow, a power rule, and all that kind of stuff. So that's going to be the most important thing. Um, for indefinite integrals, and this is our indefinite integral, and the reason why it's indefinite is because there are no limits here and here. In a future video, in a couple of days, you're going to take a look at some definite integrals, and there's going to be some limits there um, and all that stuff. But right now, there are no limits, so there's an indefinite integral. And with the indefinite integral, let's define all the different pieces to it. The first one is the integral symbol, which is just this our like S-shaped symbol. The lowercase f of x, the way our book deals with it, is called the integrand. The dx is the variable of integration. Remember when we learned in our first semester, dy over dx was the change in the y value over the change in the x value. And what we've done in this part is um, we've multiplied both sides that really this equals dy. And so when we take the antiderivative, we get f of x, and that is the antiderivative, the capital F. And then c is the arbitrary constant that we have to add, because when we take the derivative of, say, x squared, all the functions that are x squared are just going to differ by that constant value. So anytime you evaluate an indefinite integral, in other words, ones without limits here and here, we have to make sure to add that constant value. Uh, this, is make a, this will make a whole lot of sense to you here after I do a couple more slides and a couple of examples. But you've got to know the different pieces of it, what the integrand is, what the variable of integration is when we apply our integral later on, uh, February, March. We're going to start spinning these things around axes, vertical lines, horizontal lines, and your integral is going to change from dx to dy and back and forth. This is going to be the antiderivative, and that's going to be our most important part today. Hey, our first rule, our power rule. This says the integral of the c value stands for a constant. It's x to the r power dx. To take the antiderivative, the c can come out front. That's my constant. It's x to the r plus 1 power over r plus 1 plus c. Um, you have to add 1 to the power because remember when you took the derivative, you subtracted 1 from the power. You brought the power down, then you subtracted 1. And that's why i got to add 1 to the power, and i got to divide by whatever that new power is. So the way this works, if I take the integral of the indefinite integral of 2x plus 3, dx, the 2x plus 3 in the parentheses, um, the 2 will come out front. So it's 2, and I'm going to raise the x to x squared, because I add 1 to the power, divide it by 2, because that 2 is the, uh, the x squared, plus 3. It was x to the 0, so now it's x to the first power, divided by 1. And then I have to add my constant to it. Um, I would simplify this, and as you get a, go along with this, you're not going to have to write out this step as much. Um, but obviously, the 2's will cancel, and so I end up with x squared plus 3x plus c, and that x squared plus 3x plus 3, x squared plus 3x plus c is the antiderivative, or it evaluates the indefinite integral um, of this first example. Some other very common indefinite integrals are all of the trig functions. Um, I think I didn't unplug myself. Um, are all the, all the all the trig functions without um, using any kind of chain rule or without using any kind of uh, change in variable, which we'll get into in my next lesson. Um, so if I just had the antiderivative of cosine, it's going to be sine. If I, then, and the reason is, if you think about this logically, the derivative of sine is cosine. So the antiderivative of cosine is sine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. I've got to bring that negative over. So the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. The derivative of a tangent is secant squared. So the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. Same thing with cotangent and cosecant. Notice I have the negatives to deal with again. Secant uh, times tangent is secant. 
and then cosecant times cotangent is negative cosecant. These are ones that you just have to memorize. I mean, you already know them as derivatives, so if you think about it logically, the derivative of secant is secant times tangent. So the antiderivative of secant times tangent is secant. Um, make sure you add the constant values, you got it. All right? So let's take a look at uh, maybe an example of that. Uh, first of all, I'm going to evaluate the indefinite integral of 1 over cosine times cotangent dx. I'm going to first write that as the secant of x times the tangent of x dx. The antiderivative of secant times tangent is secant of x plus my constant value c. Easy as that. Um, make sure you simplify your integrands if you can simplify them. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. We'll get into more complex integration. Um, obviously, it's not going to be that easy all the time, but we're getting some more complex integration uh, in our future lessons. Um, one of the things that we do sometimes is, oh, sorry, uh, let's take a look at what we call, sometimes are, are referred to as the first of the fundamental theorems of calculus in some books. Our book does not refer to it that way, but um, let, I'll just give you an example. If you take the integral of the derivative of an integrand, you're just going to end up with that integrand plus the constant value because it's order of operations where you're taking the derivative first and then you're integrating it, and that's why i got to add the c value. The one that you see most likely on the AP exam is we'll take the derivative of the integral of the integrand, and then you're left with just f of x. On my example, we're going to go ahead and take the integral first. So we take the derivative, and we evaluate this indefinite integral, which is going to be x cubed over 3 plus my constant. That's the value of the indefinite integral. And if I take the derivative of that, I'm just left back, back to x squared. No constant value, because when I take the derivative of the constant, drops out. We're going to expand this concept when we get into definite integrals in a couple of lessons. Uh, I'll show you how they word it on the AP exam, because this is a very common, like, quick little multiple choice question that they often have on there. If you know how to do it, it's easy. If you don't know how to do it, you can sit and look at it for a long time and just not get it. Um, our final concept for today is taking a look at what happens with our simple differential equations. In our simple differential equations, what's going to be given to you is you're going to be given a derivative. So I'm given the derivative, in this case, 6x squared plus x minus 5. And I want to find the original function if my initial condition f of 0 equals 2. This, original, this initial condition can be any, at any x value. It doesn't have to be at 0. I just happen to be at, be at 0 this time. And so what you want to do is you want to take the antiderivative of your derivative and then plug in your constant value, or plug in your um, known value to get the constant. So the first step is going to be set up this integral of 6x squared plus x minus 5 dx. I anti-differentiate that. So it's going to be 6 times x cubed over 3 uh, plus x squared over 2 minus 5x plus c. And that is my antiderivative, or f of x. Now, if I plug in the point 0, 2, I get uh, it's going to be 6 times 0 over 3 plus 0 over 2 minus 5 times 0. You obviously don't have to write this down plus c equals 2, so my constant is 2. So ultimately, the f of x, the equation you're looking for, and this is the answer to the problem, is going to be this simplified, which is going to be 2x cubed. This simplified, usually I just write it as 1 half x squared, and then minus the 5x, and plus 2. We put that constant in there. We're going to do a lot more with differential equations later on in the semester. This is just kind of a, a, a preview into that. We're going to be, and the, but the concept never changes. Like, I'm going to take the antiderivative, plug in a point that's given to me, work it out, find the constant value, and then write the equation. It's just going to get more complex, and we're going to relate it to some slope fields, and that's much later on in the course when we get in closer to the AP exam. All right, so biggest thing for you tonight is to learn all those antiderivatives, learn the power rule, do some practice on that stuff, and uh, just be able to take the antiderivatives. Don't forget to add your constant values. I won't kill you on that on the, on the tests and quizzes, but uh, you got to make sure you get it down so on the AP exam they don't uh, take off any points for that. Best of luck.